All right, so what we have going on today, um, we went to, uh, as just a backup source of heat, pretty much, uh, instead of what we have, a, of course, the, the central uh, gas heating um, is our primary source of heat, but um, uh, we just wanted to have secondary sources and something that didn't require electricity. Um, gas is the only thing that's requires. Um, if we're on natural gas, or you can go propane, um, either one. Uh, but this is one that we've already installed um, and this is for our primary living space so uh, they have three sizes um, and this is actually made by Ashley Stove Company uh, which is owned by US Stove. This is not, not sponsored video or anything like that um, it's just something that a project that we did thought we'd share it um, and how it turned out for us. Yeah, like I said, it uses no electricity. Um, so that's that's the big advantage that we went for. Uh, and also, unlike the traditional uh, freestanding stoves uh, for, for gas or what have you, um, or, or even uh, if you're if you're doing a wood stove or, or whatnot, you have to have you know, basically a chimney pipe, uh, something to, um, to, to vent upward um, through your ceiling or or into, a, into an exterior chimney or what have you. Um, this doesn't require that. The big advantage of the direct vent is it actually just goes straight through your wall. And it actually uses outside air for combustion air. The way it is, it's a sealed chamber. Um, there's no exchange of, uh, of, of combustion gas into the house whatsoever, unlike, um, say, an unvented um, heater uh, or an unvented fireplace. Um, something like that. Um, this does vent outside and it actually uses outside air so you're not even using your inside air for combustion. In, in a case like that, every bit of air that goes outside would have to be drawn in from, from outside to replace it, which would be drawn in cold air in the wintertime. In this case it doesn't do that. Um, it actually has a, a basically a, uh, a pipe within a pipe. So it draws in air, the cool air from outside for the combustion air from the outside pipe and it goes through the, uh, through the bottom, through the combustion chamber. Um, you have a, a fuel rail across on the inside uh, for your burner, and then the hot air naturally rises on its own and goes outside through the inside pipe. And it just goes right out your wall. Uh, and and it's, not, it's really not too bad to install. We're gonna show you how today, um, because we like this one so much, we're actually gonna add a smaller unit in our master suite area to, to, to be able to have that backup source. Just looking on some of the online reviews on this, I know there was a big concern from different people uh, where they're questioning whether this had a fan. No, it doesn't have a fan. And that's actually a big advantage in, it, in that it does not require electricity. That's, that's the big thing about it. That's what made us want to, um, to install this to begin with is that it doesn't require electricity. Um, does it need a fan? No, it actually, it does not. Um, it, it naturally circulates on its own because it obviously can't see, but what it's doing is, and you see some vents in the front here, but actually there's vents in the top that the heat is just like, this is just the jacket that you're seeing. Um, and then the heater obviously is encased inside uh, where the combustion chamber is. And so what it's doing is it's drawing cool air in the bottom and it's heating the hot, the hot air naturally rises out the top so it's going up across your ceiling basically and dispersing into the room throughout your house uh, and like i say with that that hot air is rising it's pulling in cooler air the coolest air is on the floor so it's pulling that in um, and it's just naturally circulating in the in the, in the, in the room um, and in fact um, it was it was really surprising to me like even even the bedrooms, uh, the the doors, you know, for the for out, out of this uh, main room, um, as long as you leave the doors open, it, it actually heats them surprisingly well. Also, um, now for a bedroom, obviously, you know, you might want to shut the door at night or what have you. Um, so you're not going to circulate that way. That would that would be a problem. But um, as long as the, as long as the doors are open, it does actually circulate into the other rooms. It was actually surprising to, to me, in fact, that it did that, it did that so well. And you do notice, like, if you, if I just walk from from this room, and actually, right now, this is on. This is what's heating today, and it's about 30 degrees outside, and it's very comfortable in here, um, in the whole room. It's not like it's just warm here, 
and then cooler her on the other side of the room. No, it's actually um, an even temperature. So, so our house is 2,000 square feet of living space um, that, that we're actually heating. Um, now, if right now, if you were to go into one of the bedrooms, it might be a couple of degree less. Uh, you, you might notice a little bit, just a little bit of change when you go into the other rooms because it's not quite circulating uh, fully to that effect. But now, this heater is actually the largest one of the three choices that you have in this. Um, it is the uh, DBAG30N. The N at the end just means for natural gas. Um, so you just have the natural gas option or the propane option. So as far as these model numbers, there's one misleading thing about it that I don't understand why the company did it. But um, like I say, you, th this is the, the 30N, we're gonna install today up the 11N, uh, and they're all DVAG, whatever that is. Um, uh, but the 11 does stand for 11,000 BTU input. This one, however, was the 30N. It does not mean 30, Thousand BTU input. Strangely, it actually is 25,000 BTU input. Just thought I'd make that uh, note because a little bit misleading. Don't know why the company did it. What about the thermostat? Is it just does it just stay on full flame until you turn it off, or you know, do you just regulate the the gas up and down? Um, what it does um, coming in, and I'll show you. So you you just have like uh, a setting. Uh, for you know, so it actually is turning the flame up some when you when you turn that up, but it in fact has a built-in thermostat. So it's 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 got a uh, a sensor uh, on the bottom where the air is coming in the bottom, and it's so it's detecting the room air temperature before it heats it basically as it's drawing that room air in, and it'll actually once it reaches that set point, which is not on a degree scale. It's just on a one, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, so, like right now, um, it's 30 degrees outside. I've got it at about a three, and it's keeping keeping it really uh, comfortable in here. Um, but you can always make that adjustment. Uh, however, if it reaches whatever that temperature is that it's satisfied, it actually will turn the burner off. So we decided we're like I said, we're going to put one in the, the the master suite area of the house. Um, for the next one, um, and that's what we're going to start installing today. And we're going to we're going to film all this. We're going to walk you through it. We're going to show you how to do it. It's really not that bad. But the first time I did this one, just going by the directions, it kind of it tells you how to do it. But then, like most directions, it kind of leaves a lot of questions that are unanswered. We're gonna we're gonna address that. All right, the one we're going to do today is the DBAG 11. This is the smallest one that they do. This is 11,000 BTU input. That's not necessarily the output, but that's the gas you're putting in because some of your heat is going to waste outside. Obviously, um, you never, you don't, you're not going to get 100%. Um, but you get, you get close to it. All right, to show you the size difference, and there's a substantial size difference. This is kind of like daddy, and this is kind of like baby. <laughs> and then I don't have the 17 one. Um, the, the metal guy, it's it'd probably be more like mom, right? But we're gonna put baby in today. But the installation is exactly the same. All right, so what else is in the box? Here's the heater itself, obviously, but there's um, parts to it. So in, in other words, the, the heater itself has already comes pre-assembled. That's great. I'm gonna show you what else comes in the box. So here you have a, it's kind of like a, a, a bracket thing. So you, you basically, you're gonna, you're gonna fold this down and it's gonna, this is what's gonna go inside your wall, actually, um, that is just basically like a heat shield because your combustion air and uh, flue gas is gonna go through the, the center kind of a this going through your wall. So this encases and protects kind of that heat. It, uh, the, the, what heat does go outside um, uh, through your flue gas is going outside. Um, this this boxes it in between uh, uh, between your wall studs. This guy is is what the, the heater is going to mount to, and it's going to mount to the wall. So this guy is going to is going to screw on to the back side of that heater mount. So that's going to go 
and this is gonna go in the wall. This is gonna go flat against the wall. And the heater is gonna mount to these two top brackets and those two bottom brackets. Um, that's what's actually gonna hold the wall. And then you're gonna screw this into the studs of the wall. Um, so that's actually just gonna go on the back side of the heater there. Of course you have your mounting hardware kit, uh, just all your screws and stuff. This is what you're actually gonna see outside. The only thing outside your wall is, is this part right here. Um, and this is what's gonna go inside the wall that connects to the back side of the heater. Um, and this is what I was talking about. Now they have they have styrofoam like you know in here to ignore that. But this the black one on the on the inside is gonna be what your what your your combustion gas, in other words, after it's uh, went through the fire and is dumping that to the outside um, is going to go through this guy and then your 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 air intake bringing the air from outside in to the combustion chamber is going to be on the inside the outside one so it's actually helping to kind of cool some of that heat that's going through your wall anyway because it's pulling in cool fresh air around the outside of that um, around you know this one being hot this one being cool the cool is on the outside so it's actually helping to take some of that waste heat back in to the chamber to give it back to your house in a sense and it's also helping to not have so much heat in in your wall they gave you this uh, basically foil backed insulation that will go around wrap around this just to shield some of that heat as well, um, just for efficiency and for shielding it out of your, your wall. Um, and then you also have this plate if you need for a combustible wall. Um, it's not necessarily, um, I think on this one, I didn't end up using this uh, because on the outside, we actually have stucco that this goes out. Um, stucco being non-combustible, I wasn't too worried about it. Um, but you also have this silicon gasket um, that goes on the outside as well that you can you can seal basically back here where this is this guy is going to go against your wall on this back left, um, and you can put that that silicone ring around it just to make sure that bugs or air leakage or something can't find its way into your wall and that's it that's it for parts so the big the, the big thing is is uh we're gonna we're gonna basically cut a hole in our wall um it's just a matter of lining it up to the right place cutting it out and take note of where your electrical outlets are and know that most likely there is a electrical wire running from outlet to outlet to outlet across between them through those wall studs so if you, you, you might want to raise this up enough to avoid that, but that's just for your hole um, that you're cutting, which is going to be towards the upper side of, of the heater. So make sure you check out the next video in this series. Um, it's going to be all about the installation. Um, so follow me over there. Uh, I'll give you a, a link here. Follow it over and let's go.